Welcome back everybody, it is the working brother back at you with another talk and yet again we've got Drago Ljubasnic, Drago, welcome back, how are you doing? I'm great, long time no see man. I know, uh, even though it looks like uh, we're wearing the same shirts and uh, we might be recording this right after the other recording, that is not what is happening. This is actually a different shirt. I have several of these shirts, by the way, for the record. <laughs> like, this is uh, a, a drone company that I uh, had some affiliation with, let's put it that way. And uh, I have several of these shirts. It's not like the same sweaty shirt that I'm wearing every single day. Drago, I'm pretty sure, is also not wearing the same sweater. Because we are actually recording the several days after the other one. Because uh, we had some technical difficulties. Like... Uh, Telegram was not cooperating, to put it lightly. Let's leave that there. Uh, everybody who's new here, hi, welcome. This is a comedy show. Nothing we say here has anything to do with reality. Now that that's out of the way, uh, Drago, over the past month, you've been writing uh, news articles. As the month has passed, they've become a source of comedy material. <laughs> um, I was thinking we should call these too soon updates you know because yeah. is it too soon to joke about the news when it's still news <laughs> you know? i guess not because we've been doing it for two years now so <laughs> basically yeah but but now at least we uh, have a way to label it um yeah now uh, you've got some boring joke material here. ICC ignores yeah. the Kiev's Kiev's regime's kidnapping of at least a thousand civilians in the Kursk region. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, those guys are just Russians, right? It doesn't matter. I mean, as long as they're I, Russian. I, 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 listen, I, I follow the news, technically, kind of, you know? And this is like something that I focus on, and I haven't heard of this story. So, like... <laughs> It's definitely being ignored. Why don't you shed some light on it? Let's put it that way. Yeah, well, uh, you know, this is right now, this is old news uh, because it's been, I, I, I mean, I've written about it like a half a month ago. And um, yeah, but I'm it's, saying it's like other than, you, I, I, other than you, I haven't seen this anywhere. Like I haven't seen this even like by RT or like any of the other, like, you know, Western aligned people like mention this. Let's put it that way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's expected uh, because they would want to hide something like that. And the thing is, uh, things have actually worsened quite a lot. And I've seen some pretty gruesome videos uh, of what they're doing to civilians that are living under the occupation. You know, I, I'm talking about these settlements, like villages, mostly in small towns, that are under control of um, the Kiev regime forces in the in, in the border region of the Kursk Oblast. Um, there's a lot of misconceptions about what's going on in Kursk. Um, when they when they say Kursk, it, it's almost as if the entire region was taken by the Kiev regime forces. In in you know in reality, that's that was never the the case. They just took some border areas around 500 kilometers uh, square kilometers of um, land, which is not a small portion. But I mean, if you consider the fact that Russia has 17 million over 17 million square kilometers. And that was before the four uh, regions uh, joined, you know, from former Ukraine. Um, it's not a big chunk of Russia, really. But still, there are people living there. And uh, even even if it's 10,000 people, most of them were evacuated, but some of them decided to stay. Foolishly, I have to say, because, um, you know, uh, why would you want to stay under the occupation of people who have been shelling Donbas for a decade? So. You know, they, those pro people probably thought, you know, nothing's going to happen. They're going to leave us alone. But that's not the case. And uh, these people were um, formally evacuated. So th there's no uh, news about it because they were evacuated, like like formally evacuated from a war zone. So like they're being saved. The, the real, you know, deal is that they're not being uh, saved. And there's, uh, I've heard reports about torture. I've heard reports about all sorts of things that they're doing to them. I, I can't share any other information additional. I'm, I'm also waiting, you know, to hear more about this. But I know it's happening because some of the videos I've seen, they're pretty gr gruesome. I've uh, linked them in the, uh, in the article. People can read about it. 
Uh, I'm pretty sure you would not want to get, you know, um, a YouTube strike for showing it. So yeah, we're not, uh, we're not going to show those. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So I just advise people to, um, you know, take a look at the article, see what, um, what the sources are saying and, uh, what the sources are showing, because as I said, there is footage, uh, for at the time of the writing, there was a thousand people. Now it could be like a double of that, like th we could have a few thousand people who are now missing. So, um, it's it's I I don't think the story is going to be seen is going to be seen in Western media anytime soon, because uh, of course it will break the narrative that the Kiev regime forces is a beacon of democracy and that the Russians are you know this uh, crazy dictatorship. So, uh, as I said, I just advise people to to read more about it. Yeah, I'll just uh, leave it at that and maybe click over here off screen to the next article. Oh yay! Um, North Korea, I always get happy when I see their flag. But nothing made me as happy to see their flag as I was when I was in the Space Museum in Moscow. And, like, the North Korean flag was in front of the NASA flag. So, in any case, for those that are not aware, Drago Bosnich, also known as Drago Bosnich, um, also known as Dragolub, uh, independent and geopolitical military analyst, writes for uh, the BRICS portal, which you can find uh, linked in the description below. Also, his uh, Telegram group. Also, like, share, subscribe, Patreon, all that good stuff. Um, maybe buy me a coffee. Look, you buy me coffees, I get coffees. Look at this. Anyway, invincible Eurasian monolith rising thanks to U.S. NATO aggression monolith yep well in in this case uh it's really true because right now we have this entente like alliance that's rising in the east where and i mean in eurasia actually because uh you know the countries involved in this are too big to just be called east or center or whatever or north uh so the point is uh, we have uh, three agreements between three countries. So there's Russia, North Korea, North Korea, China, and Russia and China. So it's not a formal alliance between like a three la three lateral alliance, but it is an alliance that exists between these three countries on a bilateral level. So uh, we can talk about a formation or very soon formation of a military alliance between these three countries. And as, as we all know now, I, I think we're going to talk about that too. North Korea is getting very advanced ICBMs, you know, just four months after signing a, a, a literal mil military alliance with Russia. So, uh, you know, we can speculate where those technologies came from. You know, I'm pretty sure the North Koreans already had very advanced technologies before, but, you know, the, the things have accel accelerated in the last four months. Um, I'm not going to insinuate anything. I leave that to the viewers. Uh, you know, like accelerated at a hypersonic speed, almost. Yeah, let's um, put it that way. And, and, and the parab parabolic trajectory, extremely exactly. parabolic. Uh, in fact, uh, considering we have like a lot of stuff to get through, and uh, when we originally started recording this, like a couple of days ago, um, we thought we were going to get it done in two, and since then we've added some stuff to talk about. So we might end up be re this might end up being three recordings with you. Um, so it's most likely that that uh, how did you say intercontinental. Um, <laughs> <laughs> article and joke subsequent joke uh, will be part of part three of uh, this talk but yeah um i just wanted to remind everybody that this is a comedy show in case we yeah. weren't being funny enough and uh <laughs> pop pop this up just uh it had a watermark of somebody so i fixed it with a dugan sticker uh. <laughs> yeah, it looks perfect. <laughs> right? It, it, yeah. It's just it's just better with a Dugan sticker than with a watermark. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It changes the um, whole deal. <laughs> it <laughs> that, that is true. It gives it a totally different twist. Um all right. Anyway, we've done the invincible stuff. Oh, this guy. Um <laughs> If it's even human, if it's not a robot. Uh, is political West bailing out due to real and increasing, increasing Ukraine fatigue? What's Ukraine fatigue? Yeah. 
Yeah, they, they, actually, it has been coming up uh, for the last two years, almost three years at this point. And it's interesting, it's almost always simultaneous with the coming of the winter season. Uh, so, you know, as, as Europe and the, especially the EU, I mean, uh, as it needs more Russian gas, it realizes there's this thing called the Ukraine fatigue, which is very interesting. Um, it could, they could be un completely unrelated, um, although I'm not really convinced. But anyway, uh, the whole point is uh, they're talking about these, the so-called Ukraine fatigue because, uh, you know, uh, Ukraine or the Kiev regime is very, very expensive. You know, it's very expensive to maintain it. Uh, because they, you know, they need a lot of money to uh, spread freedom and democracy in the country, and uh, that's not cheap. And uh, what what what's really going on is they're talking about the need to um, prioritize certain things, to change certain things, how they work, which means to you know replace Zelensky and these other guys who are completely you know non corrupt. Um, as we've been able to see in the last three years, because uh, their wealth hasn't grown exponentially. You know, uh, anyone who says that is obviously a Russian propagandist, and I'm, I'm certainly not one. So I don't want to say that's the case. Uh, so essentially, we had, um, I think her name is Valtonen. Uh, yeah, Alina Valtonen, that's the uh, uh, foreign minister of Finland. And she said this in an interview with FT. Um, now it's the last month, right, in the mid-October, that Europe is experiencing uh, Ukraine fatigue because it's simply, you know, it's very expensive to maintain the Kiev regime. So uh, I, I presume that she would not never say that if she wasn't allowed or if somebody hadn't told her, you know, that she should say it. Uh, so I guess that the deep state is right now trying to look for ways to bail out uh, before they get a humiliating defeat in the aftermath of Trump's victory in, in, in the election. Uh, every time somebody happen. says, every every time somebody says deep state since this Ukraine thing started, um, or since the special military operation started, I should say, uh, the only thing that comes to mind is that retarded uh, Kopi, a Ukrainian approved mapper page slash maybe <laughs> even YouTube channel. I don't know. Do they have a YouTube channel? Um, not I sure, but probably. I, I I don't know. I don't care. Um, but the point is, it, it's it's the, the only thing that comes to mind. And like, why would you choose that? Like, if you had any choice of anything, like, why would you choose deep state? That's yeah. just uh, telling. Let's put it that way. So very, speaking very. of Zelensky. Oh yeah, the secret. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think this is also old news at this point. It's been well over 10 days since he um, essentially <laughs> said that uh, if he doesn't get what he needs for the victory plan, <laughs> victory plan, uh, then he's going to you know, need nukes. So, uh, I mean, I can talk about how stupid this uh, request is, but I just want to, you know, um, point out that they're winning so so much and the russians are losing so bad that they need nukes to to yeah they're they're winning decisively um so they're running so decisively that they need nukes to to win so that's pretty interesting you know and they keep saying they keep saying that putin is weak because he's saber rattling you know his because of his nuclear saber rattling so who's saber rattling now like who's who's asking for nukes now and who's saying that that's the only way to win right well i mean if Question. you're winning hold on yep um is part of his plan to nuke russia or is part of his plan to have nukes and to be like oh i have nukes so you can't attack me anymore because then i'll nuke you is that or is yeah, it yeah. like we're gonna that's nuke you yeah, th that was like that was the, the official idea. But you know, given what these people do, uh, I'm not sure if you know giving them nukes is a very good idea. So, uh, um, if if that's the plan, then the first thing is gonna is likely to happen immediately after the second thing. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somehow that's not surprising. Um, 
how far are we into this? Fifteen minutes? We can go for another article. Let's do another yep. article and then and then and then we'll go into like a, a video digest. <laughs> um, desperate to catch up in hypersonics, U.S. recycles fails weapons programs. Um, yeah, why? Uh, I've I've written about this for for years. I mean, I don't I don't uh, well over half a decade at this point. I, I think the technical think, term is ad nauseum. Yeah, ad nauseum, essentially. So, uh, as we know, the U.S. has a lot of problems with hypersonics. Like, it, it has at least a dozen programs at this point. It, it was eight just a year ago. Now it's 11 or 12, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and none of them are operational. Uh, they've, they've inducted units, and they have launchers, but they don't have the missiles in them. So... Um, what happened is that the, the program that went the furthest, it's the AGM-13A, um, 183A, or uh, also known as the Arrow. Um, this program was canceled and it was essentially shelved uh, last year, uh, back in March, if I'm not mistaken. And then it was like restarted and then shelved again back in March 20, this year, 2024. Uh, so, in the end, they said, okay, we're going to, you know, give up on this program. And then they realized it was the best program they had, and it failed. Uh, so they decided to recycle it. So now they're trying to, you know, you reuse whatever the they managed to accomplish with this, which is not much, um, in hopes of trying to, you know, reach parity with Russia. And the interesting thing is I keep seeing in Western media that there's a race, you know, about hypersonics. Well, uh, you know, I'm not sure if they got the memo, but the, the Chinese and the Russians and the North Koreans and at this point, uh, the Iranians, too, they all have uh, hypersonic missiles. So the race it's is over. It's a race, man. man. I mean, it's, man, you don't understand the modern definition of racing. Um, you're going by the old Cold War definition of racing. Like in, in the Cold War, like you had definitions that included male, female, um, you know, and start, <laughs> yeah. you know, like things were defined. Nowadays, they're not so clear. You know what I mean? So like the race is there and the Chinese and all these other unimportant details that you mentioned, they, all of them, they're ahead <laughs> they didn't win because you can't win yeah. it's a never-ending race so oh, yeah the fact right. that the americans are in the race they're in the race they haven't started but they're in the race <laughs> <laughs> pretty much <laughs> like you're just not seeing it through this like uh spectrum <laughs> of, of possibilities <laughs> you're seeing it more as a yes or no have they gotten anything done no but they're in the race man, <laughs> That's man I, I think see it. anyway if i if i if i'm like that i'm probably racist man i i should really <laughs> like look into my soul and and deal with that you you don't understand the definition of racism basically <laughs> uh, <laughs> well it is a race right so yeah if i believe uh, that it, they're not part of the race and then i'm racist so <laughs> basically um by the way uh everybody this is the other recording that is going live as we speak um in the background uh check it out um so yeah uh, I should minimize that now. And uh, where are our... Oh, we've got Independence Day queued. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, this is a video that surfaced. Could be fake. It's a comedy show. We don't care. We're discussing it for comedic value. Um, and this one's got, like, tons of comedic value. You're going to love that you stuck around for this. Um, if you haven't seen it, this is gold. Uh, it's a video, supposedly, allegedly, unofficially, of uh, the Iranians peppering, uh, what was that place called? I can't remember. Somewhere, Nebatim Airbase, uh, probably. Nebatim, that's the one. Somewhere on the aircraft carrier, I was going to say. And it's being filmed by an American. Uh, I'm not going to be racist, but it's highly likely that he's black. Um... <laughs> Listen, this is just gold. 
Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Expletive warning. Like, uh, he says bad words. Take your children to the other room. This is not for the dining. Uh, it's I'm sure not the, to be the watched. kids are watching shows like this. <laughs> Man, actually, you'd be surprised. I've had subscribers tell me that they, that like, even a long time ago, even like a year and a half ago, one of my subscribers told me that he watches, like, these talks with his family, including his kids, at dinner. Um, oh, wow. So, yeah. I should watch my language then. <laughs> Um, what can I say? Uh, all, all the, all the usual warnings apply. This is a comedy show. Uh, all right. Oh <laughs> shit! What the fuck? <laughs> oh my god! There's like a minute and a half oh of this. Oh my fucking so god! What? If you want, just like scroll oh forward. My god. <laughs> if this is not your type of, type of comedy. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! Now you can actually hear the explosions in the background. Oh shit! But I don't remember. <clears throat> I don't remember this video. What the fuck is going on right now? Like coming across my feed earlier. They and this seems to be before the up. sirens went off. So what the fuck? <laughs> Listen, this Look is, this at is this hilarious. Shit. Bro, this some next level shit right here. Look at this shit. <laughs> the best review I've seen so far. <laughs> Look how many is coming down. IRGC approves this video. <laughs> oh my God. What the fuck? Bro, it's like Independence Day out. Oh shit. It's like Independence that he just aged himself. Whoa. That was a good movie, though. Whoa! <laughs> Ain't no way. Ain't, Ain't no, no way. Ain't no fucking way. <laughs> Whoa. What the fuck, bro? <laughs> All right. Um, that's the end of that. I just thought I've never I'd... seen a more uh, like like I've never seen someone <laughs> describe the the event with so few words, which he have which he repeated many times. But it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I think it was a uh, not not that eloquent, but very concise um, yeah, commentary. Yeah. <laughs> um, my my nerd ass would try to figure out which the war, which warheads are, uh, you know, incoming. So I guess it, it's better to listen to him than me. So. I just wanted to play this for everybody who's a fan of these videos, because everybody knows I've uh, flown some drones before, uh, as you might tell by my shirt. Um, so this is you can tell by the cross here that it's the Russian uh, HD fiber optic 30 frames uh, for drones. And he's flying it here. And I think it's already starting to be slowed down here, the video, because it was sped up. And he's catching up to this armored column. And as you can see, he's at an intersection. And like people who've flown drones will know that when you're at an intersection, let me pause it a bit uh, better. Uh, when you're at an intersection, you can see the poles right here. And that when there's poles, that means there's probably some wires. Now, even though he's, you know, not going to have interference from those electrical wires. <laughs> He's still going to, you know, he has a chance of hitting them, which would uh, mess up his chances of flying. Um, and here, if you pay attention, he actually flies through some wires on the other side of the road. Um, I don't know if you can see that coming across. There they are. There's one wire. And there is the other wire. And he's flying through these wires coming down on this guy. And I just found that unbelievable. Um, the, the, like, wow. cause, <laughs> like, it's Talk just... Talk about being unlucky, man. I mean, about the uh, guy that got hit. Down, yeah, yeah, the guy that got hit. Highly unlucky. And the guy who's flying is highly skilled. Like he's yeah. getting better, he's getting better vision than we're seeing here, so he can see these wires. But still, 
that is some really good flying so yeah i just wanted to highlight that this is uh, i don't know where i think this might be curse oblast because they are using yeah. these fpv drones right. with with the fiber optics in kursk a lot more than they are anywhere else um so it's highly likely that these uh, fiber optic uh, videos are coming from there um but yeah the, he's coming in to check on that one that they hit earlier and double tap it just in case um yeah so i wanted to highlight that video let's see what else we've got here oh we've got this guy no we'll leave this guy for later let's get back to your articles uh any mini mini mo well just before we move on with the articles i want to say that you know i've tried and i think you can confirm mm -hmm. that i've tried to fly these things in a game which is a like a hyper real realistic let's say hyper realistic because it's 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 about these FPV drones, and I've I've had like one percent of the success of this guy, and he's flying the real deal. So, um, uh, yes, I can vouch for that live. I've yeah. seen him attempt it, and uh, we actually flew that. I might leave a link somewhere. Um, we flew, or I flew it live in one of our talks where we discussed and reviewed this uh, this game. So, I will leave a link to that now. Why don't you get to these uh, North Koreans in Ukraine while I mute myself and take myself off screen so I can uh, clear my throat? <laughs> yep. Uh, well, you know, it, it, this is like the all the rage for the last uh, 10 days, like two weeks, around two weeks. Uh, they've been saying that the, the, the North Koreans are in Ukraine, that they're going to be the game changer. You know, the U.S. has even threatened uh, to get directly involved in if this is confirmed. And they keep finding evidence, even though they're not there. So it's it's interesting uh, how they're claiming that there's like there's nearly twelve thousand North Koreans fighting for the Russians. And uh, if you listen to the mainstream media or the mainstream propaganda machine, to be precise, uh, you would think that these are some kind of genetically altered super soldiers because uh, there are claims that they will change the balance of power. You know and uh, I just want to remind people that the Kiev regime claims to have neutralized 700,000. Um, yeah. You're muted. Uh, yeah, yeah, I muted myself. Sorry what I was clearing my throat. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, they're super soldiers who are going to change the balance of everything. <laughs> and, yeah. and at the same time, North Korea malnourishes all of its people, and they're starving. Oh. And like they, yeah. <laughs> it's like don't forget that detail. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like you know, yeah, like I mean? like all of them are starving. It's only these twelve thousand guys who are getting all the meals. You know, all the food, all the meat, and you know whatever GMO things that they eat. Uh, so it's it's crazy. You know, like it, 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 the the mainstream propaganda machine is so filled with so much illogic. That, like we could talk about it until tomorrow so we, we we might actually try to do a show about the the sheer scale of the illogic of of their propaganda and we've you know and we've experienced that firsthand as serbs during the 90s and even to this day uh so uh you know the, the, the it's it's so crazy when you think about it the the very claim the twelve thousand soldiers are going to change the outcome while allegedly six hundred thousand russians died so it's you know it's pretty crazy, but but they still they still keep claiming that, uh, and the other thing is uh, there's no evidence that these people are fighting on the front lines. I've I've seen attempts to use the, the footage where there are Buryats and Tuvans and 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 uh, Yakuts who are actually Asians and they live in Russia. They've been living in Russia forever, so um, they are the natives of their areas. And when Russia took over these lands. Uh, it, it gave them autonomy. So it didn't, you know, eradicate them as it happened in the U.S. So, uh, and these people are very, very loyal to Russia. And I just want to point out that, for example, Tuvans and Buryats are among the uh, among the top uh, when it comes to uh, conscription in Russia. So more of them are ready to fight for Russia than even ethnic there, Russians. So let 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 me put it to you, let me put it to the listeners in in British talk. They're like the Gurkhas of Russian Federation. Like, if exactly. you know what Gurkhas are, that's that's what these guys are to the Russians, basically. And and moreover, 
Um, if you're really interested, look for Borea tankers in World War II. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? It's not like a new thing, you know? <laughs> it's like, yeah, exactly. Exactly. These people have actually been fighting, and it's not just them. You also have the only Buddhists in Europe, those are comics. Uh, who live in uh, area in area west of Astrakhan, if I'm not mistaken, which is like in southern Russia, in the eastern part of southern Russia. So, uh, you know, these people have actually been fighting for the Russian military for, I don't know, 500, 600 years. They fought in the Na Napoleonic Wars. They fought uh, against the Turks. They fought in World War One, World War II. Uh, they're fighting now. Uh, and they're fighting alongside, uh, you know, other minorities and other Russian ethnic groups like Cossacks, for example. So, you know, I mean, Russia is pretty diverse, but not diverse. That's in, why, in the that's why, that's why Putin's going to fail and Russia's going to fall apart yeah. and become 17,000 different countries. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. Because, I mean, it's, because it's, they... It's their first time that they're trying something like this to defend themselves exactly. on mass. <laughs> exactly. They've never they've, they've never tried that before. So, like, I mean, as I said, you have these people who are Asian looking like they are part of the as it was known before the yellow race, I, although it's, it's a stupid name, but whatever. They're not yellow. They they they, they, they look the way they look. Uh, they're called Asians now, just, you know, to make it simple without going into too many details. The point is, you would not be able to differentiate a North Korean from any of these guys. And also to add, there's also a Korean minority in Far Eastern Russia, in, in, in the Russian Far East. So, like, you could have literal Koreans fighting in the Russian military now who are actually the citizens of Russia. So, like, they, they could manipulate this information to present these people as North Koreans. We're fighting for Russia because, you know, Russia has lost so many people that it needs North Korean aid. But the point is, if the previous reports about North Korean artillery and North Korean missiles and rockets uh, entering Russian service are true, then the Russians need these people to integrate North Korean systems into the Russian military. So it's very likely that there are uh, North Korean military officers and personnel in Russia, but they're not frontline personnel. It just doesn't make sense unless, like there is this possibility, I'm not saying it's not, it's, it, it's, it's out of, outside of the realm of possibility, but um, I, I really doubt that the North Koreans would have sent tens of thousands of soldiers it's very likely or it's possible that they've sent some special forces because they want to make sure that these special forces have combat experience and the russians would accept this because it's part of the, the latest agreement that, that they have about military cooperation and it it doesn't hurt their war effort in the slightest and on the other hand it helps north koreans so this is i, I think this is the most this is the furthest that north korean involvement has uh, gone to in ukraine uh, so I really, really doubt that there are, you know, North Korean divisions fighting for the Russians in the Donbass or Kursk or whatever. So um, I find that ridiculous, to be honest. Um, but there will be. They're just in training. That's what you say. Yeah. There, <laughs> there could be in the future. But right now, I, you know, considering the fact that the, it's, it's the mainstream propaganda machine claiming all this, I'm very skeptical, you know. Um, yeah. I'm wondering what to uh, uh, bother everybody who's watching, including you, who's subject to my whims with, should I put up this meme? I think I will. Um, so this came across my feed, so I decided to share it um, on Telegram. Stare Serbi, a village in Poland named Old Serb. Um, yeah. Yeah. So in the comments, they said that's where maybe some of the Serbian Hussars retired to back in the day. Also, don't forget to uh, participate in chat. <laughs> that's it us helps in the, the algorithm. Universe. Yeah. Or us in the in the forever field. Once it so, goes. So uh, I've actually seen a map with like dozens of of uh, toponyms as they're called, like name places mm -hmm. or settlement places in uh, not just in Poland, but also like in the Czech Republic, in Hungary, in Slovakia. Let me put it to you this way. It goes from Germany 
all the way to yeah. Turkey. <laughs> and that's yeah. the and that's the and that's the like short map of, of where there's Serbian toponyms. <laughs> um I've seen maps that go all the way to like Morocco with Serbian names. But let's not get into conspiracy theories, at least not without some maps to uh, to prove them. Um Where is my Polish MEP? There it is. Um this is gonna be fun. Uh also you know, it's just comedy, and we're all joking. Even I think Mr. George Gre- Gre- George Brown, G R Z E G O R Z Brown. Yeah, that so, would be Gregor. It's like a very, very difficult. It's very difficult to pronounce. Um, but it's um, Gerz. So it's Gerz. Yeah. So it's J. It's it's J basically. It's George, George. It's George. Well, yeah. It's George Brown. There we go. I pronounced his name. Now I can play it. George Brown, uh, MEP, as in member of European fucking Parliament. Uh, Thank you very much. Making a very good joke. So, uh, the majority of this house is uh, persistently trying to take. European nations to war with Russia, as we could observe in previous weeks. Now you are, ta- you are taking us to war with China. Uh, does Europe deserve? Full disclosure: I actually haven't seen the full clip. To be a proxy in some Anglo-Saxon, American, Jewish wars <laughs> fought all over the world. Do I was European for this nations? Do that that's the only quote I, I knew. I didn't know he even talked about China. Deserve to be blackmailed and be held hostages of foreign affairs of foreign How soon do you think this guy, as well as Guterres, are going to have like uh pedophilia slash uh, me too slash uh, suicided by two bullets in the head while falling off a, <laughs> off 11th floor the, this guy and Guterres man they've got their like <laughs> they, like after Guterres went to Putin and was like yes hi <laughs> like he's got like a, a marker on his back foreign empires no they don't I don't want to go to this war Let's uh, stabilize the situation. Let's not bring more tension uh, where there is enough. Uh, Let's uh, remember that China, by its mere existence, uh, had saved Europe at least twice, twice in the 20th century from aggressive uh, policy of the Soviet Union. The mere existence of China, also communist country, uh, saved I us a lot of trouble. I beg you to keep the time. It's one minute horror. speaking Thank time you for catch. <laughs> I love Yeah, this. he didn't need, like, he, he lo- just, like, made a lot of enemies with that last thing, you know, <laughs> that he said. So, anyway, he didn't really need to say that, but, but still, I understand where he's coming from. He's Polish, you know, after all. Uh, they mm-hmm. don't like the Soviet Union, to be mi- to put it mildly. Uh, so I expect that. However, what he said before is something that I would never expect from a Polish MEP. I would expect it from a Slovak or Czech or Hungarian, obviously, uh, but not Oh, I, I said MEP. I think technically he's a far-right extremist, neo-Nazi, uh, fascist, uh, Euro- Polish Trump... Uh, <laughs> yeah, member he, of the European he's, Parliament. He's, a, he's an extremist, obviously. Like, he's not a normal person because a normal person would say, "Let's go to war with Russia. It's going to end well," just like the previous twenty-five times. Uh, so. <laughs> I want to remind you that this channel is not eligible for monetization. It has never been eligible for monetization. It's basically a joke at this point. Um, <laughs> thank you. If you're already there on Patreon. And thank you to everyone who's bought a coffee. If you haven't, you can. All right. Now that that's out of the way. Um, (laughs) I don't know what I should do in this episode and what I should do in the next one. Uh, Shall we do Gunter? 
no, sure. no, let's leave. That's, that's, no, no, let's leave Gunter. Let's leave Gunter for the next one. Um, I want to do this. Uh, have you seen this one? I'm finding oh, yeah. you twenty gajillion bajillion fulfillion morbillion doobidoo <laughs> dollars for terminating my YouTube channels. Now the actual piece of news is that Google has been fined a staggering twenty gajillion dollars. Never heard of this number um, by a Russian court. More than all the money in the world, according to some reports. I mean, it's Google. It should be okay. They they should be able sure. to cover it. <laughs> the, it's a lot with their name so <laughs> right what's 20 decillion for 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 somebody who's got a google um yeah somebody who's an actual mathematician will be in the comments going no well actually <laughs> <laughs> that's one when you deduce and, the number it's pretty much right <laughs> so it's 20 decillion in 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 dollars also it's two undecillion in rubles <laughs> so oh, under man, the is killing the russians <laughs> <laughs> right poor russians i wonder how much that's going to be in the newly devalued u.s dollars uh anyway let's go back to are we here yes we are yep. mainstream propaganda machine fuming as putin's isolation myth crumbles i was it with you that i was saying we should do a special on just the bricks and and yep. discuss how isolated putin is and who all these people are and what they're doing there and why they might not like putin I mean, <laughs> and they came to tell him in, at- in person you know, just look at all these losers. Like they, they, they represent only like eighty percent of the global population and like seventy percent of the real, actual world economy. Like, what do they know? Uh, so, I mean, uh, jokes aside, th- did anyone really believe that Putin was isolated? Like, it was funny to me because he kept, you know, meeting with world, world leaders and uh, traveling everywhere. And now he's just confirmed it that, you know, a lot of countries are interested in to, in continuing to work with Russia. So I'm just surprised that the Kiev regime didn't send any drones to Kazan, you know, to show that they wanted to attend too, right? Um, so, um, although I, I'm pretty sure that the U.S. advised against that because they would get, gain a lot of enemies. But that still didn't prevent Zelensky from uh, in trying to insult India for, you know, um, just having normal relations with Russia um, and the rest of the world for, you know, not helping him win the war. Uh, so it's interesting, you know, it's very interesting how they keep saying that Putin is uh, disliked. Uh, you know, it's very interesting how they, they refuse to do these global polls to see who the most popular politician in the world is. Uh, because can you imagine the shock in the Western media and the Western propaganda machine uh, if if they have to admit that like 70% of you know people on the planet support Putin, uh, that would be a pretty a big slap uh, for them. Uh, but which is why they they don't want to do any global polls. I think. Yeah, let's let's say that that's why. Um, I haven't I haven't seen any global polls, but I follow memes from all around the world. And whenever there's elections, people make memes. And uh, generally speaking, in most elections that I've seen, uh, the only president that I've seen written in <laughs> to places he doesn't belong is Putin. Like you won't see right. like. You won't see Xi Jinping being written in in Africa or in Australia or or. Yes, I know Africa oh, is not a country. I, I I know Africa is not a country. I was I, I didn't want like be racist and pick a country in Africa because I haven't paid attention to any 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 elections in Africa and haven't actually seen any memes from Africa. But I have seen memes from Australia where he was written in. Also in other Western countries, often it's Putin who's written in. Um, not Modi. I wonder what Indians actually think of Modi. Do we have any Indian subscribers? Are you an Indian subscriber? Or are you watching this in Indian? Leave a comment. Tell us what you think of Modi. Now that that's out of the way, Drago, what do you think of Modi? Because <laughs> you were going to say something. Decent guy. He seems to be a decent guy, at least to me. Uh, I don't know much about, you know, to be honest, I don't know much about Indian internal politics. 
uh, to be able to know understand that, I would probably need to drop, you know, trying to understand anything else because India is so, such a massive country, and uh, the fact that it's a federation and it has so many other, uh, you know, working internal workings of of its system that are so complex that it, like it would need it, it. It's probably like a separate science to try to understand India. Uh, it's it's a very it's it's an enormous country with an enormous population the world's largest population uh since last year or the year before i'm not I'm not sure anymore uh so i guess if he's able to you know juggle all of that and uh, also deal with uh, global politics well he's a pretty capable guy i would say that's a very, very, very good way to look at it. Objectively, I'm saying. Um, yeah. But subjectively, as an Indian, leave a comment. Uh, <laughs> um, also, I want to say, after this BRICS thing, the craziest thing that I like when 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 BRICS was happening, they announced that like China and India are gonna pull out from that like disputed region. I was like, yeah, sure, they're gonna pull out. And then like three days later, they're like, here is the plan for pulling out. And I was like, okay, sure, buddy. And then like a day after that, like there's videos of them pulling out. I was like, what? <laughs> they like what? They solved it and like just one sit down. It's pretty. You know the 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 Russian diplomacy, which is the best actual diplomacy in the world they've uh, they they took part in creating this agreement and you know i was pretty amazed by how simple the agreement was and they could have saved you know do dozens if not hundreds of lives if they just you know uh, implemented this five or six or seven years ago so the 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 deal is to you know to put it shortly is to have patrols in disputed areas at different times so you know the indians would go on a patrol on the border that they think is theirs and then the chinese would do the same but in a different uh, at a different time so they wouldn't encounter each other and then you know beat the shit out of each other so um or you know get into a shooting a fight or a firefight but they used point. to yeah because because like uh you say beat the shit out of each other because like for those that don't know it, the the both armies agreed like what was it five years ago or three years ago or seven years yeah. ago i don't remember but they, they they agreed that they wouldn't take any arms up there like no bullets no yeah. firearms so that they wouldn't shoot each other but they could beat each other and like hit each other with like batons and shit so like look yeah, out for, yeah, yeah, yeah. look out for pictures they, they're, they're all like equipped like you know in anti-riot gear and and the point is like it wasn't the case in the beginning uh, so they were just using batons and you know sm smashing each other's heads and you know there were fatalities and and a lot of injuries so then they decided okay you know at least let's try to protect our border guards and then they gave them riot gear equipment uh, so obviously that worked you know there weren't any more fatalities but still you know there were people with broken bones and and fractured skulls so um you know the, the 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 problem is you don't know how this is going to escalate like both countries are nuclear armed and you you have no idea if somebody's gonna you know uh ask for artillery support if some you know crazy guy from the local um command will decide okay fuck them all like let's let's kill them all and then fire a machine gun at at the other group of the people so so it's a you know it's, it's a very risky situation so the fact that they managed to resolve that it's it's a great you know boost for for the BRICS and the multipolar world because the us was exploiting this conflict for years and you know they were trying to get india into this AUKUS agreement which is like australia uk us which was like like an like a version of pacific nato that was asia asia pacific, asia pacific nato that was supposed to contain china as they say and they try to get india into it india was smart enough not to do it but still they have certain agreements you know that are anti-chinese in nature so with this issue resolved i guess the indians and the chinese can finally start behaving um let's say friendly to each other so it's going to be a good thing for both countries um yeah uh bottom line i was surprised at how quickly it happened um and this guy came out with it i had to i had to i had to man it's fucking oh retarded. My God. look at his fucking oh face like like you know, I, I'm I'm all for peace and uh, you know world peace and and, and so on, but, yeah, but like he's this not. guy That's has the thing. Most, yeah, the, the most punchable face I've ever seen in my life. So, um, um, okay, so let's let's decipher this. He's got a kissy face, 
and he's going or duck face and he's going i hate bricks um and in case you missed our previous uh drawing attention to the fact that he uh we're gonna do a actually i'm gonna get i'm gonna get that from chat somebody found out in chat i'm gonna remember who it was later when i look it up but um that his uh missus the one whose name he took have you ever by the way leave a comment please leave a comment no no please leave a comment if you have ever in your life heard of a man taking his spouse's name like his female spouse's last name as his own after being uh, after getting married i have never heard of or experienced like this in my surroundings or reality have you drago no, and I guess uh, his, uh, you know, uh, self-determination and his uh, self-identity, actually, that's a better word, is so strong that he decided to do it. So, yeah, he's a progressive guy, obviously. I mean, you can't be progressive if you don't hate bricks and if you don't take your wife's last name. So, so one of my subscribers, I'll look into it and I'll bring the screenshots and everything maybe for the next recording. Um looked into who she actually was and she's like some ceo or like vp or like something like that of some like extremely big uh, statistics and marketing type uh, data mining company um interesting so yeah more details on mr gunter frulein jan <laughs> who hates bricks he hates the you know, the, the interesting thing is i would i would say that she's also blind from you know looking at those computer screens all her life because if she's that successful she could have found uh, a far a better looking guy let's say just let's just say a better looking guy i'm not going to get into the rest of his um, the, the, you fact know, that, uh, the fact that you even entertain the idea that this was a marriage that was not set up by some kind of services um, is hilarious. Yeah, uh, pretty much. Like that itself <laughs> is a joke. Um, we've got one article, and then we're gonna, you know, we'll do the video review. We're already approaching the hour. We'll do the video review and more Gunther memes in the next in the next uh, in the next talk. Um, so. Philippines-based U.S. missiles targeting China to stay indefinitely, destabilizing Asia-Pacific region. Are these the same missiles that you talked about like two, three recordings ago that they said yep. would be temporary? Yep, yep. They said that, you know, they were to be uh, there until March 2025. Now they're saying it's going to be a bit longer uh, without saying how like how many months longer so or years or decades i don't know it depends how um much time we have before world war three or world war four or whatever it's going to come in the next in the foreseeable future so th the crazy thing is uh, these are the tomahawk missiles uh, deployed on the on the so-called typhon not typhoon but typhon it's literally t uh y p h o n uh systems typhon weapon systems as they're called um so uh, these things have, uh, for now, two sorts of weapons, two sets of missiles. It's the Tomahawk, which is, um, let's say, low-flying subsonic cruise missile with a maximum range of, of around 2,400 kilometers. Although this specific variant, if I'm not mistaken, has 1,600 kilometers um, in range, in maximum range. And then the other thing is the SM-6 missile, which is a multi-purpose missile, which can be used as an anti-ship platform uh, as a land attack platform uh, as an air defense platform it's it's a pretty you know capable missile uh, but its range is rather limited it's it's 500 kilometers which makes it like an srbm like a short range ballistic missile so uh, but the point is if you if you install these things in um, northwestern luzon which is the largest uh, and the northernmost uh, island of the philippines you can target pretty much anything all the way to central china so we're talking about uh, cities like Changsha, uh, which is a very big city in like the southern central part of China. So, and of course, also Hong Kong uh, and Shanghai are, are in range. And then there's news that the same type of missiles or uh, missile systems are installed in Japan, which also puts uh, Beijing well in, in, in the range of these things. And also these are nuclear capable, these Tomahawk missiles, which are part of the Typhon system. So. Uh, you know, if you want to make sure that China is 
uh, has, is at a strategic disadvantage, you can put all these things you know, in the Asia Pacific region and ensure that America has a strategic, strategic advantage. So what, what this is prompting China to do, well, invest more in ICBMs. So I guess it's a very good, it's, it's very, you know, good news for people in California uh, who would be the first to get, uh, you know, the, the taste of Chinese radioactive freedom and democracy in the case that anything escalates. And Listen, not to mention, yeah. Uh, with all these missiles and stuff recently. Yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy, um, you know, and, and the on, craziest thing is uh, mm. the, the Philippines does have this like maritime border dispute with China. But in order to like resolve this, you have to negotiate with the Chinese or at least if America wants to help you, they should send in the Navy, right? Not some missiles that are not going to change anything. They're not going to make your bo maritime border safer. Uh, but they will make you or make your country a target by for a nuclear armed country like China. So I really hope, you know, someone in F the Philippines um, finally realizes that this is very bad for the country and that, you know, a hundred, uh, well over a hundred million uh, Filipinos are in by danger way, because of that. Speaking of Philippines, is who's in charge of the Philippines? Is it still that guy who like made everything illegal and killed half the people there and like... That that really good guy who's like uh, pro Western democracy. Oh, that, uh, are, are you talking about Duterte? Because he was a president what, before. He was I a president remember, before. I can't remember what his name was. There was like that army general guy or something like that. That he like he took he took over the country and he like declared war on like this Muslim island where they had terrorists. And then oh like, yeah, 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 yeah. He was the president at the time. I, I can't remember who the president is now, but they're obviously pro-American because they wouldn't, you know, accept something like this if they weren't. Uh, um, but yeah, the guy you're talking like, about is Rod Rodrigo Duterte. So Duterte, yeah, or something like that. Yeah. Um, what was I gonna say? So Philippines, um, wanting to get nuked as well, huh? Not just Poland. Um, <laughs> <laughs> also, I, mean, I was going to interject. You know, I've worked with the Filipinos. They're pretty decent people. You know, I wouldn't want to see them destroyed, uh, which is why I really hope, you know, uh, that uh, they are uh, come back to their senses because they gain nothing do a, from this. Uh, uh, so. Out of respect, I won't, uh, I won't do a Filipino accent out of respect. All those, like, <laughs> living for, like, 25 years in Kuwait, like, I know how to do a Filipino accent. A lot of them work in the fast food, so, like, you get a lot of exposures to Filipinos in Kuwait. Yeah, Filipinos, generally speaking, are good good people. But, you know, uh, like with all of, from from Thailand to the Philippines, uh, I'm always scared of their silat um, abilities. You know that uh, martial art with the knives? That, that oh, yeah. always, uh, that always... Uh, Keeps me at a distance and respectful to most uh, Southeast Asians from that uh, p peninsula. Um, so, yeah, no, I was going to say about oh, yeah. uh, these missiles. I was going to interject when you were talking, but you expertly shut me up on my own show. Oh, I didn't, I didn't hear. <laughs> no, no, you I did. You what? did, but it was good. Maybe you didn't hear me, but the point is you learned to talk over me. So and to pretend <laughs> you didn't hear me after like, what, 78,000 recordings? Anyway, so the point is, the point is I was going to interject that I've learned with these missiles and these nuclear capable ones too, that... Um, it's basically a numbers game. So, like, we're saying Philippines, um, and they've got, and they've got, like, what, maybe like seven launchers at most, like on on their islands, and each of these have like what, twelve, fifteen, twenty-five, fifty at most missiles. How many yeah. anti-air defense missiles does one Chinese ship have on the way to China? Forget like Chinese land-based air defense. I'm talking about on the way to China. One Chinese ship. It has how many missiles of air defense like 25 well, it, it depends like if you if we're talking about the big battle cruises it could be like hundreds uh hundreds of air defense missiles like the smaller corvettes and, and frigates they would have like in the dozens they would be in the dozens uh of course there's also the civs or the close-in weapon systems like the american phalanx or the russian kashtan uh or what the i'm Pantier. getting at 
what I'm getting at is a, a numbers game of like you know say yes. a spattering a spattering of 12 Chinese ships any size any random co- co- like you know configuration of different classes of ship would be able to most likely take out the whole salvo of 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 all the yeah. possible even nuclear tip missiles coming from the Philippines so like yeah it's just like what, sure. are you, what are you doing like why are you bothering <laughs> you, know? you know the the, the issue is the real problem problem with with uh, these generally with with uh, cruise missiles is they're they're flying just like too low you know and we've seen uh, the tomahawk the tomahawk missile is pretty similar to the russian caliber or the uh you know the the, the air launched ones like the kh uh, 101 uh like they're in a similar class of weapons so they can fly very very low uh they fly subsonic like almost transonic like very close to Mach, mm-hmm. let's say eight or Mach, uh, Mach 0.8 or Mach 0.9 uh, so it's it's not a supersonic weapon uh, and f- for for the record the Russians also have the versions of the caliber that flies subsonic for the most of the most of the way to the target and then accelerates you up to Mach 3 when it needs to you know in in the last stages of the flight So that makes it very deadly. It is even deadlier than the Tomahawk. But the point is the Tomahawk, it, it's not a stealthy cruise missile. You know, it's, you can, the radar can pick it up. But the problem is because it flies too low, it's very, you know, like like you have like 30 to 50 kilometers uh, in range to to pick it up. So that's that makes it very difficult to defend against. Uh, and, you know, you could you could have like if. Uh, a Chinese if a Chinese ship is on the way of the Tomahawk, it could shoot it down. But it's very possible that you know you can uh, change the, the the trajectory of the tomahawk to let's say evade Chinese groups of uh, let's say carrier groups or groups of uh, battle cruisers or any any sort of like battleship then of course you would have to go through Chinese land-based air defenses which is another problem and those are very difficult to you know track and um, you know to, to know where exactly they are but the thing is if you fire 20 and just one which is nuclear tipped, reaches a city like with a population of two or three or five million you know you could have hundreds of thousands of people who would die so the, the problem is the, the then? numbers game what then is on the what side then? you know what have you achieved what have you achieved then that is the question yeah like <laughs> the, the point is like the the entire idea of a nuclear war between you know big nations like china russia and the united states is, is crazy So I would never do it. But the, the problem is there are crazy people at the Pentagon who think they can do it. You know, there are people who think that there's what they call acceptable collateral damage in nuclear war. And they, you know, I've read about these studies by the Rand Corporation and these other, you know, like uh, very important uh, tank tanks, are the, as they're called. And these people actually think it's acceptable, you know, to lose a couple of million people that you consider second rate, you know, like for them, Filipinos are second rate, just like us Serbs are like, I don't know, 10 rate probably, uh, or <laughs> e- even in America, you know, if you look at the, the, the states that are like more conservative, most of the missiles are in those states, most of American ICBMs. So they are thinking, okay, you know, those ICBMs would be targeted by the Russians and the Chinese. So, you know, who gives a damn about those people in the Midwest? You know, wait, they're, they're not wait, pro-establishment, uh, so is, they can die. This is news to me, man. Are you telling me, are you telling me that U.S. home-based nuclear ICBM silos are generally in Republican states? Yeah, precisely. There are some, uh, you know, a launcher missile silos in California, uh, and they're mostly used for testing but the the icbm fields as they're called are all in in the midwest you know the logic was those are the least populous states and if the russians wanted to destroy these icbm fields they would you know they would kill less people by targeting less populous states but the point is uh when this strategy was made it was made like 50 or 60 years ago now Mm -hmm. this strategy has a political um let's say A definition to it or a political moment Depth. to it where yeah, yeah, yeah. you know where the federal institutions dislike the people who vote republican or who are more conservative and uh, just you know having those people killed would actually be like doing them a favor right 
Um, I'm just thinking think Civil War 3.0. I'm just thinking U.S. Civil War 3.0. Yeah. The Republicans are nuclear armed and the Democrats are like all of their like little colorful flags. Let's put it that way. <laughs> um, we've gone well over the hour. I think this is more comedy than most people want in one yeah. day. Um, at least this kind of serious comedy. Um, I'm going to play this in the background. Let's see if I can do this, yeah. Putin's fleet of Russian espionage in the Baltic Sea. I'm going to just play like an intro of the minute with a dramatic voice, and it'll be like a preview of what we're going to get into in the next one. From Copenhagen, a Russian ship is making its way from St. Petersburg across the Baltic Sea. The Sibiryakov is no ordinary research vessel. It does not simply explore sea routes and oceans. It has a secret mission. A mission that has put the military and intelligence services in Europe on alert. The Danish military does not let the ship out of its sight. Oh, the powerful Danish military. On board the supposed research vessel, armed soldiers. Armed soldiers on the supposed research vessel. (laughs) Next time. Drago, last time I cut you off, I didn't give you a chance to have any closing statements. Did you uh, want to say anything, or did you, you want to get to it in the next? Oh, one? I forgot what I wanted to say the last time. <laughs> I can't remember now. So it was probably not not important if I if I forgot about it so easily. So who that's, gives? A that's damn? what my that's what my grandmother used to say as well. All right, um, everyone, have a good one. And if you forgot, it wasn't important. If it's important, you'll remember. Um, all right. Peace out. Have a good one.